everybody. So today we are doing the install on the WeBoost Drive Reach OTR Fleet. Brought to you from my wonderful kitchen because honestly my garage is so hot that I can't even stand to be in there and try to talk to the camera without sweating. So it's just, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work. So lovely kitchen. So after a lot of research, I went with the WeBoost Drive Reach OTR Fleet. So the reason I went with the Fleet version is because bundled with the, the Reach Booster, it has the OTR antenna. If you just get the regular Drive Reach for your car, it's going to come with that magnetic antenna. And it's about $500 for that package and then another $120 for the antenna. But if you get the Drive Reach Fleet, they change out the magnetic antenna for the OTR one. And it's about $550. So you save about $50 going with the fleet version. I'm going to be installing this on my 2019 Ford F-150. Unfortunately, I live right next to an AT&T tower at my house and I get 5G plus. So I'm not going to be able to do a before and after test at my house. But this afternoon, I'm going to be going to a, an area that I get really low service and I'm going to see exactly how well this product works. So I did a lot of research on how I should mount this and exactly how it should be mounted. And then I only found a couple videos that state that the receiver or the antenna and the booster need or the antenna on the inside the uh, the one that's actually boosting the signal need to be about eight feet apart so some people try to mount it right on top of the vehicle and then put the interior antenna less than three feet from the antenna that's right above it and it causes a lot of interference so to mitigate that i'm going to be mounting this on my very back bar on my billy bar system on my bed rack and then the antenna for the interior is going to go as far forward up on my dash. So I also want to apologize now. It is 11 o'clock in the middle of the day in August in Texas. I'm going to be sweating, so I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of talking. You see a lot of like clips here and there. Was there some music over it? Because it's just hot. I got to have a fan going. I have to. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, yeah. So without further ado, let's get this thing. Let's get this thing. Blah, 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 blah. See, this is what happens when I go a month without posting a video. I don't get as comfortable on camera. Without further ado, let's go install this bad boy. The Fleet Series comes with a ladder mount for the OTR antenna, which just so happened to fit perfectly through my Billy Bar's mold panels. Okay, so, so I turned my fan off to talk about this because I feel like this may be a problem. They come with two mats on the drive reach of the R system and you have the 13 inch and an 18 inch mast extension that you can stack on top of each other. But the problem is the way this system is designed, you can only use one or the other. So right now I have the 13 inch, I'm starting to wire it up and then I realized that, you know, because I was going to leave extra room, I guess I wanted to add the other extension for when I'm actually off grid. and based on this configuration you can't do that there's no like quick disconnect um i really wish WeBoost would have installed something like that because once you install one of these antennas or one of these masts you're stuck with that without having to run the cord all the way back just to run the extension so i'm not sure exactly how i'm going to run this now because i want to be able to actually add that extension later if i needed it but running around town every day i don't want to have it sticking so far up one thing to note is while I was trying to loosely fit everything, that antenna cable holds a lot of line memory. So you need to be aware of that as you're trying to run it through the truck and through the bed that it will twist up on you and hold that twist. So I hope you can hear me, but I've got it coming from underneath my bed cover and there's a slot just big enough in between the seam and the bed for this cable to fit up in. I'm just gonna run it all the way down and then through that hole in the side or right underneath the bed. Don't tighten anything down until I am for sure this is exactly where everything is gonna sit and then I'll go back and tighten everything down. I'll do loose connections only. Now to get into the cab on the newer F-150s, there's no real good access point, so I'm gonna have to drill into my cab. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, I don't suggest you do this. What I'm gonna be doing is making a hole just big enough for the antenna cable to run through and then I've got some and I've got some uh, neoprene that I'm going to be using with an adhesive to put on there. I'm going to run the cable through it to give it some waterproof protection. I want to be able to pull the cable out and put it back in 
and still have room to like work on things in the future and then not scrape against the metal and stuff. If I would have thought it through, I would have used like a through hole fitting that is adjustable for cables. That would be a much more better fit for this, but this is all I have for right now. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. But as you can see, here's the cable. Ran it down, out the side, the bed there. Now I'm about to run it up into the cab. In the back seat, you'll see a ridge that comes up here and then flattens out. And this is where, you know, you the jack for your tire goes. I'm able to access this little point right here underneath the truck. I'll show you. Let's light on. Turn on the lights. There we go. So that will be this access point here, right there on that ridge. You can see right there in that corner. Right up here. Okay, sorry for the confusion for a second. So I had to pull this back, pull this piece out, pull it up. But you can see right in. Let me get right underneath here. There's our hole. Right there, see the light coming through? So it's perfectly right on that ridge where I needed it to be and right gonna be right behind this panel. See, this is why I didn't want to do everything in the garage. Whew. All right, we got it ran, cable. And this is, as you can see, at least about right there. And about right there behind the seat is where I'm gonna have the, the booster. So it's just enough room to fit from the very back of my bed into the cab. Let me tell y'all something. So the first time I mounted this Bulletproof Mounting Solutions rack up there, it took me a really long time with a couple wrenches to get these seven millimeters out. Oh, uh, what? Oh, emergency flashers. Okay. This was $12. This little Ryobi extension, flex extension. Best thing I've ever bought. I mean, I took those out in about seven seconds. Very handy for getting in tight spots. Trust me. So kind of the same issue with the cable that came off the rear antenna. It was like just enough room to run from the back of my bed into the truck. This interior antenna doesn't allow for me to run through the door seal around the edge and into the back. It's just not long enough. So I'm having to run through my center console here. I'm gonna run it around down the side and underneath the carpet to the back. Um, really not sure why they don't include a little bit more length on this, but it would be a lot more helpful. Okay, so 2019 F-150. Anybody else looking to install up on the dash? It's really simple. The glove box pops down. There'll be a little lever right here on the right hand side. This little notch right here just kind of pops in there. And once you let this down, you have full access all the way up to the uh, top of the dash. So it's really easy to run straight down the middle. All right, got everything loosely tightened. I'm gonna go to a spot not too far, probably about 10 minutes away from my house and I know I'll get really low service, it dips out. And uh, we're gonna test this system. Yeah, the dogs with me. Can't really see right back there. Uh, Riley's back there. Ugh. They're bugging the hell out of me. I don't know how you people with kids do it. Like, they can't talk, but they still really, really, really annoy me sometimes. Ain't that right, Riley? Okay, so we are at my little spot. I wish we'd go a little further back. The service really drops off further back in the back. They think we're ready about to go play, but we're not. Um, See if you can see this. Let me get my phone open here. I have two bars at 5G. Normally it's a little less than this, but I usually can go further back. So let's turn the system on. All right, we've turned the switch on. Now what I'm gonna do is go to airplane mode. I'm gonna take it out of airplane mode. We are now at Still two bars at 5G. Three bars at 5G. So we gained an extra bar. Let's see how fast I can search something. Google is loading much faster. Um, Bill Fish, which I guess was looking at earlier. Yeah, normally I can't get this kind of speed at all. Not even close. Let's see if I can on TikTok. Normally back here, especially even this spot, I can't even watch 
Hold on. Man. Okay, yeah, this is much faster. I know it's only showing one bar, but normally I can't even get a single video to load while I'm back here. Now this is this is all loading. Oh yeah, this is this is really fast. I had a noticeably increase in speed, even though my 5G showed only from two bars to three bars. Back there in that part where the lake is, I I can barely get a single TikTok to load let alone be able to scroll through. So I saw a really large increase in speed. So I will update, I'll update this video in a couple weeks uh, after my road trip to see how it really does in more remote areas. But for the most part, the areas that I live in have 5G, just they tend to drop off quite a bit. So we'll see, stay tuned.